When you first launch Premiere Pro, you should see a start screen similar to this one, which is prompting you to start a new project or open a previous project. Let's click on New Project and give it a name and click OK. I'll start with this area down in the lower left hand corner, which is the Project Panel area. Now, your view might differ than this if you're not in the editing workspace. So right now, just make sure that you've got editing highlighted in blue and you see the project panel down in the lower left. Let's start off by taking a quick tour of the Premiere Pro interface. As you see in the project area, this is where all of my media is stored. I've got some audio files here. I've got some video files. I've got some project folders here where I can organize things, also known as bins, as well as some timelines. And as you can imagine, there are tools at the bottom for searching, deleting, and creating new bins. And just as you imagine, it's easy enough just to take any asset and drag and drop it into a newly created folder. Again, keeping organized as these projects start to grow. The next area is the timeline area that you see here, which has a working relationship with the program monitor up here. So as you scrub down here at the bottom, you'll notice that whatever you scrub, wherever this time marker is, you'll get the resulting frame up here, which is also known as your program or what you're going to be exporting when you complete the final video. So again, there's a direct relationship between this panel down here and what you see up here. And finally, the source panel area, which is the easiest place to trim your clips before you add them to the timeline. By double clicking on any of the media in the project panel, that will preload it into the source monitor so you can now play or scrub the media. Once you find an area where you'd like to set an endpoint, you can go ahead and just mark an in either by hitting the I key or just clicking this icon here and dragging your video to where you'd like to have an out point, either hitting the mark out icon or pressing O. It's that easy. One of the most important panels to get a really good understanding of is the media browser panel. So simply by clicking on this tab, I can bring that forward. Here's where you'll find access to all of your local drives and your network drives. And navigating this particular panel is actually fairly easy. Now on US keyboards, there's a key above the tab key called the tilde key, which will toggle any panel full screen. So simply by hitting this key and having my mouse in this general area will allow me to take this panel full screen. Now if I hit the tilde key again, again being a toggle switch, you'll see it goes back to its original position. And by placing my cursor in the timeline area and I hit the tilde key, you'll see it takes that particular panel full screen. This is a feature you will use all the time and it really comes handy in the media browser. For the keyboards that don't have the tilde key, there's a simple fix for you as well and that's to look under keyboard shortcuts and just type in the word under cursor and you'll get a selection that says maximize or restore frame under cursor and here you'll see that there's a shortcut key there you can click in this area and assign any key you want to your keyboard that will allow you to toggle back and forth so as I refer to hitting the tilde key you'll be hitting your own selected keyboard shortcut again if your keyboard does not have a tilde key now for this exercise, let's import that media that you've downloaded. I'm going to put this in list view to make it easier to navigate. So from here, I'm going to double click on the hoverboard footage folder. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this panel to full screen and put it in thumbnail view. And moving your mouse side to side will allow you to hover scrub over any of the clips. And now I just want to select all the clips so I can either click the first clip hold the shift key down and hit the last clip or just do a standard command A on Mac or control A on Windows and I'm gonna hit my tilde key and with all the clips selected all I have to do now is just simply drag any of these selected clips into a new timeline to create that sequence and as you'll see it went ahead and took the name of the first clip hoverboard 001 Name that the sequence and all of the clips have now been placed on the sequence. 
Another key thing to point out is when you drag and drop your clips from the media browser into the sequence area, you'll notice when you go back over to the project panel, you'll see not only did it create the new sequence for you, it also imported all of the clips into the project, saving you a key step. From here, you might want to go ahead and click on the folder button, or again, what's known as a bin, and give that a name and start organizing some of your footage. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these and then drag and drop them into that folder just to keep myself organized. And at this point, you should have a key understanding of the four general areas of Premiere Pro CC, from the project area to the timeline sequence area to the program and source monitor areas. And now you should be ready to fine tune your edit.